Well, one of the better performing names in the market today we haven't talked about yet, it is related to tech. It is AMD. They got a new chip, and they're looking to take on NVIDIA. Christina Partzinevelos joins us now from San Jose with more on this story. What do we know? Well, just like you said, this is about proving that AMD is a suitable competitor to NVIDIA's H100 chip used to power large language models. But when compared with NVIDIA's H100 chip, AMD's version, the MI300X, does have more bandwidth and memory capacity and also operates on open, open source software. NVIDIA chips need to operate on its own CUDA software. But NVIDIA software is more commonly used, which means higher switching costs and could lead to a slower AMD uptake for new customers. AMD estimates AI data center will bring in about 400 million in Q4 this present quarter with $2 billion next year. That's specifically geared towards their MI300 chips. Investors will be looking for details on whether that $2 billion threshold will increase today. So a few things to keep an eye out for uh, this big event that's happening. Everybody's in the other room right now. It's still early uh, right now on East, uh, West Coast time, I should say. But who are AMD's partners? Which hyperscalers will take to the stage and show that they are now buying from AMD, not just NVIDIA? Any increases to the MI300 2024 estimates and performance met metrics, especially when you compare to uh, NVIDIA's H100. All right. So at, at this afternoon, 430, right, Elisa Sue is going to be on the network giving an interview about, about yes, all this. I'll be in You'll be you'll be on there with that. Yeah. Well, I'll be speaking with her, and that's going to be definitely uh, some of the topics. You know, the comparison, the pricing, China export controls. Given that Nvidia has already warned, you know, it would significantly impact Q4. AMD's, you know, remained a little bit more quiet, but that's because they don't do as much business with China. Uh, the specs, and especially the open source open source software here, and then lastly, the partners. That's a big deal which partners are already going to buy AMD products and integrate it into their systems as opposed to just using NVIDIA. NVIDIA CEO, speaking of, Jensen Wong, he's in Singapore, right? What's, what's he reacting? Right. Uh, has he had any reaction to this yet? Not necessarily to this event per se, but he did comment on U.S. export controls, and this is just after Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo on Sunday said indirectly to NVIDIA that she would control any chips uh, that have been rebalanced or rejigged to provide AI uh, to China. So she was pretty aggressive about that. NVIDIA said they're working with the United States on those thresholds. They're falling within those thresholds. So that's what Jensen said uh, just over the uh, past few hours. And the second point he made, which I found really interesting, is he said Huawei is a very formidable competitor. That is putting Huawei on a higher pedestal. Huawei was able to create AI chips with older U.S. equipment. What does that tell us if they've already been able to advance so much so that the, the CEO of NVIDIA is saying they're a very formidable competitor? What does that mean for this market, you know, two years from now when you have all of these new entrants from hyperscalers to AMD, NVIDIA, uh, et cetera, joining in and taking some of that market share? Christina, we'll look forward to your interview uh, with Lisa Sue later today. Christina Partzinevelos out in San Jose for us. You know, Jim, it's, it feels like it's a NVIDIA, AMD, Broadcom, and then the also RANs. But, you know, Bank of America today says Qualcomm's the top pick for it because they are a key beneficiary of AI. Got to pat my, my fellow here on the back. He's, uh, he's with me in that. Um, yep. There are some growing indications that the bottom really is in in semiconductors. And I'm talking about outside of AI, the more cyclical stuff, mobile phones, PC. You're, you're getting more and more indications from both companies and from uh, trade organizations like the World uh, Semiconductor Trade Statistics Organization. It really looks like the bottom's in. Now, folks, as I say this, look, when a bottom forms, it doesn't form in a V usually, okay? So there Maybe some noise down here at the bottom, but barring a sharp contraction in the global economy, these are the sort of stocks that should perform well going forward are the more cyclical types of semiconductors, like a Qualcomm, congratulations, Jason, like an NXP semiconductor, which is uh, obviously tied to um, uh, automobiles, but also Internet of Things. But these more generic semiconductor companies should do well going forward. You want to talk about Qualcomm? Yeah. And no. AMD? I mean, lack of ownership, looking at it. What's yeah. your story? Yeah. So I think, I think to, to Jimmy's point, I think what the big part for me on Qualcomm, I think handsets are bottoming. So I think they're back on the way up. I think IoT has, is, is also moving as well. Autos, I think, is, is they're, st they're really starting to diversify their revenue over the last few years. And I think that's where the opportunity is there. Um, it's a cheap stock. I mean, a lot of, a lot of these 
uh, semiconductor stocks are very expensive, right? So 10 times earnings roughly, right? Um, and it's up 14% in the last three months. So and it's up only 18% for the year. Uh, so I think this this is this is this is a very positive development. I think also the the uh, the move in Foxconn, Foxconn, you know, the manufacturing for the Apple phones. I think again that speaks to the, the advantages Qualcomm will have going forward. Got something real quick, real quick. Personally, I do not want to chase the semis. I think the potential is there that in Q3 and Q3 we saw a little bit of a peak in terms of earnings growth. I could see a deceleration as you move into uh, the early part of, of 2024. It's kind of consistent of what, with what I believe. I just believe from the general sense uh, of, as you pointed out before, the economy, I think the economy is going to slow. That's going to affect risk. And Q1 is probably your weakest quarter of the four quarters in 2024. 